So we're here to solve this battleships puzzle I wrote called Foresight. I wanted the start of this puzzle to give effectively all the submarines. Um, you'll see that four of them are in the grid. There's one more that's not yet placed, but through a quick uh, mental arithmetic on the rows, we have 10, 21, 31 used. There are 35 ships in this fleet, which I wanted to reinforce um, for solvers, but this almost, you could call it a cheap trick at the start, is that the twos are forced for the completed submarine rows. The last submarine is up in the second row, and so every other ship from the fourth row down is two units or more. So whenever we're placing anything in the grid, we're placing two or more at a time, and that's the kind of constraint we'll be thinking through as we make more headway in the grid. The other mental math is that we've got 9, 15, 22, 28, so there is a maximum of 7 in these external columns. There'll be x and 7 minus x, however they go, but We've got a space of the large digits there, and we'll transition back to standard battleships thinking and say how do we place the largest ship. In this fleet, the largest ship is five units large, and so there are these four options in blue to think through. This one is the quickest to eliminate because there's no five unit vertical space to go there. Um, this six coming across is fairly limited because of the four just above it, and so we only have six cells left for those four ships, so only two Cs can be introduced by a five-unit ship. But notice that any place you put a five-unit ship, you eliminate three or four. These are all four all the way out to the side where you eliminate three. So all of the options for a five-unit ship in this bottom row would conflict with the row just above it and lead you from being able to place uh, a, a, a firm set of fleets. So the only spaces for the five unit ships are vertical here, and these four in blue for sure, and one or more down above. But notice that this option on the left side would eliminate too many cells for a ship from the column right next to it, and so you actually uh, cancel all but this space on the far right for the five unit ship. It's going to take one or the other of these cells in blue and we've left one space for another ship in the 11th column, which goes right there, and that gives us the for sure placements in the grid, and now should give you pretty clear appearance of a lot more tension actually between this four, six row, because we actually now have only five ship spaces uh, left for this group that's got four, and that means we only have one more C to place, and if we were thinking through options for ships down here, any space that's going to eliminate two cells, so for instance this cell down here eliminates two up above diagonally to it and would make the four instantly undoable. Similarly this one just by the six would eliminate two cells make this undoable, so this is impossible. Even the cell that's down below the one column clue, it eliminates this, but it also can't take a second ship in that space, it eliminates two cells, and so it's undoable. So these three spaces can be marked off, and now we're even further constrained, you can do a few things. You can count up in general all the cells here and see there aren't many C's left. One thing I found in constructing this was a key constraint was just mark some sets that have a maximum of the number of ships it can take. So these two cells in yellow can have a maximum of one ship segment. These four in red around this turn can have a maximum of two ship segments. So you could take both of these, but that eliminates these two. You could take both of these, it eliminates those two. And another group, these three in orange can only have two ships in them. So I've got two in orange, two in red, maximum of one in yellow, and one already given. So six ships is the maximum what we've colored, and we've got four cells left in white, and those four plus six equals ten. So all the whites must be ships in how we do this counting. And that gives us this space. Let's step back and again think about our total column constraint. We have now six cells accounted for on this right most space, which means there's only one more ship to place in this left side, and so where orange needs to take two ships, only one ship can be in the first column, so this has to be a ship, this can't be a ship, this last in orange becomes a ship, we actually fill these in. We've placed uh, six ships in the bottom row and have just four spaces left for a ship in the 11th row. So these are all forced at this stage, and tricky deductions to work through, but hopefully you got a sense of the kinds of battleship logic that work you through these conjoined rows that uh, have uh, quite strong limitations on them. We've got to place one more four-unit ship in the grid right now, and the only option that's really left for it is this vertical six, which has five ship segments left to place. These fours coming across only have three left to place, so this is the only place for a four-unit ship. 
that now limits this row, which has three in it, to take this ship and this ship. And again, all the submarines are already in the grid, so I've got to come up and take at least one more cell. This will always be a two-unit ship coming out. Putting that in, I actually have eliminated this column, which has uh, two more ships to go into it, to just these. Um, I've got to take one more ship in the space, which finishes out this row. Um, got to take two here, which finishes this. I've got a three unit ship to place in this, three, three more ships to place up top, and they can't be two plus one because again the subs are in the grid, so I'll always take these. That cancels over here. This column's actually finished. I need to take a two unit ship here. I can't put into this cell, and it gives me this last ship here to finish the grid. So a uh, larger fleet, but not necessarily a trickier puzzle if you saw some of the insights I was intending. Again, mark the sums in the grid and get a space for where the five unit ship goes, only option on this far right, and then really work through these, these bottom two rows, the four and six, in different ways. And think pretty carefully about how the eliminations go in those spaces, but some of the key eliminations I was doing, particularly these cells, and then seeing the count that forced the remaining cells to have to be uh, split into groups. That was the, the breakthrough to really finish the puzzle and do it all logically. So if you get good at working through compact spaces like that, you'll make good headway in battleships in general, not just this puzzle, but in other tricky ones you'll run into. So hope you learned something through this video, and we'll see you again soon.